All right, folks, we need to talk about Stacey Abrams because lately she has been uh, really getting on my nerves. I can't stand her. And this is someone who I really liked. And I, I think part of the issue is that, you know, she's not necessarily focused on any one particular policy. She's not ideologically driven, but the media really likes her. They're trying to make her a phenomenon as they made Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar phenomenons, or at least try to. And it, it's so transparent, like... This is an individual who doesn't really stand for anything. And I'll admit, I actually thought that she was one of the few, you know, figures that was aligned with the Democratic Party establishment who was more admirable. And she cultivated a lot of sympathy and goodwill over the course of the last, you know, year or two because she was really laser focused on voting rights, which makes sense because she ran for governor in Georgia and that election was essentially stolen from her. Like it was rigged from the very beginning due to voter suppression and, you know, purges of the voter roll. So it makes sense that she's focusing on this. But now it's really clear that, you know, she doesn't actually stand for anything. She just is embarrassingly desperate for power of any kind. So much so that it's now reaching pathetic new levels. And she's made it clear in case you forgot, she really wants to be president. And if you did forget, she'll remind you, don't worry. And before, you know, anyone was the presumptive nominee, she made it very clear that she'd be the VP no matter who the Democratic nominee was. It doesn't even matter if they were ideologically compatible. She wants power, and she'll take it by any means necessary. And when Mike Bloomberg was temporarily surging, she even tried to normalize him unsuccessfully because she wanted to be his running mate. Now, maybe it's the case that she just wanted power. Maybe the millions of dollars that he donated to her organization had something to do with that. Regardless, she tried to normalize him, and that was a bad look. But since Mike Bloomberg has been out of the picture, she moved on to a different racist who she's now trying to normalize because she wants to be his running mate, Joe Biden. And, you know, not only did she say that she would accept the position, assuming he'd offer it to her? She's now actively lobbying for it as if we didn't already know that she really, really wants it. Hey, Stacy, just some advice from a friend. You're really embarrassing yourself and you need to stop. Not a good look. <laughs> Try not to come off as so desperate for power. Or if you do want to, you know, become the president or the vice president, like... It should be based off of some type of drive. Maybe you can make that voting rights. But just to say, I want it, that's not good enough. That's some I'm with her Hillary Clinton level of narcissism that ultimately I think will be your downfall if you don't check yourself soon. But um, she's not doing that. And, you know, as she tried to normalize a racist like Mike Bloomberg, she is now trying to, uh, you know, normalize an alleged rapist. Joe Biden, and she responded to Tara Reid's allegations by stooping to an even lower level to normalize a Democrat who is egregious and unacceptable than she had before, arguably. Now, before I show you her disingenuous defense of Joe Biden, uh, BuzzFeed obtained the talking points that his team sent out when it comes to this issue, and we're going to read through those first. So here they are. Quote, the New York Times did weeks of extensive investigative research talking to nearly two dozen former Biden staff from the 1990s, including those who worked directly with Miss Reed. Here's what they found. Quote, no other allegation about sexual assault surfaced in the course of reporting, nor did any former Biden staff members corroborate any details of Miss Reed's allegation. The Times found no pattern of sexual misconduct by Mr. Biden. Hilarious. All four of the people Miss Reed says were notified of an official complaint told the New York Times on the record that they have absolutely no recollection of any such conversation and that they certainly would have remembered it, especially because this alleged conduct would have been so wildly out of character for Joe Biden. Yes, a man who sniffs females' hair on national television. That's so out of character to think that he would sexually assault someone. Biden has been a fierce advocate for women, authoring and fighting to pass the Violence Against Women Act, which he snuck into the crime bill, and launching a campaign to end sexual assault on college campuses. He has spent his life fighting to end abuses of power against women and using his voice to advocate for women across the country and around the world. 
Here's the bottom line. Vice President Joe Biden has spent over 40 years in public life, 36 years in the Senate, seven Senate campaigns, two previous presidential runs, two vice presidential campaigns, and eight years in the White House. There has never been a complaint, allegation, hint, or rumor of any impropriety or inappropriate conduct like this regarding him ever. You know, except for Lucy Flores' allegation and the other women who came forward in 2019. Biden believes that all women have the right to be heard and to have their claims thoroughly reviewed. In this case, a thorough review by the New York Times has led to the truth. The incident did not happen. Fake news. So I read you those talking points, not to make you suffer because I know that that was probably torture, um, but because... As you listen to Stacey Abrams try to defend Joe Biden in an interview uh, on CNN, count how many of the talking points she uses, because she's almost going to hit every single one of them. Take a look. Is this a credible allegation? I believe that women deserve to be heard, and I believe that they need to be listened to. But I also believe that those allegations have to be investigated by credible sources. The New York Times did a deep investigation, and they found that the accusation was not credible. I believe Joe Biden. I believe that he is a person who has demonstrated that his love of family, his love of our community, has been made perfectly clear through his work as a congressional leader and as an American leader. I know Joe Biden, and I think that he is telling the truth and that this did not happen. So in, in 2018, you tweeted it was shameful that Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination was being rushed forward and survivors of violence like Christine Blasey Ford deserve to have their voices heard. Are you applying a different standard now? Not at all. I believe then and I believe now that women deserve to be heard because too often they are not. And Tara Reid deserved to have her story listened to and investigated. What was happening to Christine Blasey Ford was that there was no investigation. There was a rush to move the conversation forward so that no investigation was conducted. And as I said, I believe that there was those allegations needed to be investigated. And I believe that the New York Times and subsequent reports support what the Biden campaign has said. And so, I believe Joe Biden. So you said you've heard her, you've heard enough, you don't believe her, you believe Joe Biden. No, I, what I'm saying is that the New York Times investigation of her allegations, the New York Times investigation does not support the accusations against the vice president. I believe the Biden I know, and I think that he will make women proud, that he will make America proud. Does Joe Biden personally need to address this more directly and publicly? I believe his campaign has been very clear, and I believe that that is the approach that they intend to take. And I support the approach because, again, we don't want women to ever be afraid to come forward, but we also have to recognize that allegations should be investigated and that those investigations need to be borne out. So in case you weren't keeping track, she hit on four of the five talking points that Joe Biden's campaign put out. This is what they want surrogates for Joe Biden to say if the Tara Reid allegation comes up. And like a good little puppet, she's doing exactly what she was told to do. So what this should tell you about Stacey Abrams as she continues her pursuit for power is that she stands for nothing. She stands for nothing. She didn't give you her opinion there. In the minutes that she had to express her own beliefs, all she did was recite talking points that were given to her by Biden's campaign. So what do you stand for, Stacey? You want to be the president. You want to be the vice president. But what do you stand for? Do you stand for anything? Are you just willing to accept power from anyone by any means necessary? What if Trump ditched Mike Pence and offered you a VP position? Would you accept it? I mean, this is why people like Pete Buttigieg and, you know, Stacey Abrams, they irritate me because if you're not driven by policies or any sort of ideology and you don't actually care about making the world a better place and you're just in the public eye for self-aggrandizement, go away. I don't want to hear from you. Like, I get that the media loves these type of people who are, you know, charismatic and, you know, they are popular among the base of the Democratic Party, I'm assuming. But at the end of the day, if you don't stand for anything, I don't care if you want power. That means nothing to me. If you don't have policy prescriptions that will actually fix the issues that Americans are facing, then go away. I don't care if you want power. Great for you. We all want a lot of things. But you wanting power does nothing for ordinary Americans. So go away. What are you doing?
Now, to that talking point um, about the New York Times supposedly um, clearing Joe Biden's name, that's just not true. First of all, it didn't account for new revelations and account from Tara's neighbor. Um, the Larry King clip where Tara's mother called in to talk about this. And on top of that, one of the biggest hacks in cable news, Chris Saliza, even acknowledges that Biden's campaign is twisting the truth here. In an article written by Chris Saliza, if you could believe this, he says Joe Biden's campaign is twisting a New York Times story to defend against the Tara Reid allegations. Listen, when someone like Chris Saliza, who's one of the biggest hacks in cable news, is willing to condemn Joe Biden, but a supposed future leader like Stacey Abrams isn't, that says a lot about that person's character. It tells you Stacey Abrams doesn't stand for anything but Stacey Abrams. This isn't about Joe Biden. This is about herself getting power. And, you know, I'm not just picking on Stacey Abrams. Anyone else who refuses to speak out or even go so far as to defend Joe Biden by using these types of disingenuous and misleading talking points, quite frankly... Um, they should be remembered as frauds who don't actually care about women's issues. I'm talking about Nancy Pelosi, Elizabeth Warren, even individuals on the left who haven't addressed this. Yes, that includes Bernie Sanders. He needs to speak out more as well. I don't care if Joe Biden is your friend. Speak up. Do you believe in the things you said about women or do you not? This is about principle. This is about being ethical and holding people in your own party to a very high standard that you expect everyone else to be held to. But nobody believes in anything in Washington, D.C. You know, it, it's all about the pursuit of power. And they don't really care who they hurt along the way. They don't care who they throw under the bus. They don't care if what they have to say is a lie. They'll do what they're told so long as they're promised power. Why do you think Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar both dropped out to endorse Joe Biden? Why do you think Beto O'Rourke came out of hiding to endorse Joe Biden before Super Tuesday. They didn't do that out of the goodness of their heart because all of a sudden, they all came to the conclusion that Joe Biden was a phenomenal candidate on the same day. No, it's because power dynamics behind the scenes are at play. They're promised something. They're getting something in return. So Stacey Abrams hopes that if she toes the line of the Joe Biden campaign, maybe she will be rewarded with that VP slot that she very, very desperately wants. And she'll tell you about it in case you forget. She wants to be VP, guys. She wants to be the president, guys. Please remember that. Stacey Abrams for VP. These uh, figures in the Democratic Party, like anyone who's a current leader and anyone who is a prospective future leader, I mean, if you assume that these people will be the faces of the party for quite some time, the future is pretty grim. I mean, does anyone trust that Stacey Abrams will, you know, actually fight for individuals who are powerless if it's politically inconvenient? Does anyone believe that power-hungry people like Pete Buttigieg are actually going to get elected to some office, whether, you know, it's a, a, the governor of Indiana or president one day, and actually fight for people? and go against the donors of the party? Of course not. So it's frustrating. It's really frustrating, and it's not like Republicans are any better. That's not the implication here, but it's just that we were told that Democrats have the moral high ground. We were told that they were better and that we should expect better from them, and here they are disappointing us for the thousandth time again. Um, yeah, just I I'm not buying it, and people like Stacey Abrams needs to realize that if she ever wants to win the trust of the American people, you're not going to do it by, you know, talking about how desperate you are to be the president and attain power. You're going to do it by winning us over with policies, not by using talking points from Joe Biden's administration or campaign, you know, to get into his administration. So I'll leave that there. You know, I'm just sick of these people. They're all insufferable hacks. And uh, I just wish that there was uh, someone else who would challenge the status quo in the way that Bernie Sanders did. But even he, as he suspended his campaign, is not really speaking out. So, you know, we have no allies. We are the ones who are needed to stand up and fight because if you rely on a politician, that's proven to be a failure for us. So the left is its own ally. The left, you know, we're our own heroes, as corny and cliche as that sounds. I believe that women deserve to be heard and I believe that they need to be listened to.